welcome to The Basics of Life. My name is Ken Berkey, and back by, you know, not only popular demand, but kind of, uh, we're a little greedy. Our, our ratings go up when you're here. Well, thank Lenny's you. Target is in the house. Our ratings are up, so our, our advertising goes up, and then, you know, we all just become much richer. It's because, a privilege. Because of you. Oh, thank you for uh, having me. Lynette, Lynette as, uh, as our, uh, or Lynette, did I say Lynette? That's okay. I said Lynette. <laughs> wow. It, it is early. Is it like four, four in the afternoon? Yes. Lenise, you are our guru and our expert in raising children and giving parents tips on how to be great parents, and you are very passionate about this. And so uh, we're going to talk about raising children in a healthy community, right? Absolutely, yes. All right, so go for it. And I'm not an expert, but I am very passionate about it. But you play one it. on TV. Uh, yes, it's so fun. <laughs> but I do want to encourage parents, and I think there's so many things that we can learn out there, especially right now in just science. Mm -hmm. And we talk so frequently how science is finally matching up with God's plan and God's um, word. And it just is exciting for me when we see this. And as parents, we can know that we not only can read the Bible and know that it's true, but we can look at modern day science and what um, scientists are finding out through research that is actually true. So today we're going to talk about friendships and children. Okay, before that though, you are an expert because we can all become, well, maybe we're not experts, but we can all become better because you study, you are passionate about this. And parents can get better too. Yes, because yes. There's not a lot of great information out there. I mean, there is, but you got to dig for it. Yes. Our, our, our surface culture doesn't have a lot of great information about parenting. It really doesn't. And as a parent, I just want to encourage you, as you're looking at information, look at what you're reading and what you're studying and find out, is this someone's opinion or is this actually an, an opinion or some knowledge based on uh, research? Yeah. Something that's actually true, that has been studied and is scientifically proven. Because otherwise, all you're doing is collecting a bunch of in information and trying to filter out what's best. And yeah. it's just based upon somebody's opinion. Well, before you jump into this, I got to say one more thing, too. And I want to thank you for raising not only the awareness, but the value of parenting. Because yes. I think, again, parents do not get a lot of encouragement that this is one of the most important jobs we have, to yes. be parents. Yes. It, it, it is the number one factor or the top, one of the top factors of how a child turns out is the investment the parents put into raising their children. Yes. And yet, again, in our surface culture, it's kind of put to the side and there's there's other focuses and, and so this is huge and so there are a lot of heroic parents out there there are and as parents you know if we can just look ahead mm -hmm. to what the future is not only for our children but our grandchildren when our children are so young and we pay attention to how we're raising them it actually can launch them into adulthood yeah. and have super independent self-secured, successful children. And you see this too. It, you can change, in one generation it can change. Maybe, maybe a parent had tough parents or yes. a, didn't have parents or yes. had bad role models. Mm -hmm. You can change the direction in one generation. Absolutely, and most of it is about being aware. Yeah. Paying attention every single day to what you're doing. Yeah. Caring. I mean, so many times we just think, you know what, they're little kids, it just doesn't matter. Mm. Because children are so resilient. Yeah. They can go with the flow, and they are very, very flexible. But we cannot maximize and capitalize on our children's resiliency and just say, you know what, it's all going to work out for good, because it doesn't. You're talking about being intentional. You have to be intentional, okay. especially when they're little. Okay, so let's talk. About, let's go to the topic, because <laughs> this is a great topic. Yes, it is. It's on children's friendships today. And what we're going to look at is children, how they function in friendships, how important they are, but how we can foster children's friendships within our adult communities. So we're going to first look at evolutionary psychology. When we go back and we look back in science, when we look at anthropology, or we go way back to the study of mankind, and we look at humanity, what we see at the very, very beginning is that humans had hunters and gatherers. There were just di different types of people. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the hunters and gatherers, they're, they're just two different types. One hunted, one gathered. But when we look at, when we do these archaeological digs, or we w look at how they survived, what we know is that they lived in communities. Mm -hmm. And what they did is they cooperated, and they worked together. And the, the cultures, the tribes, the clans that actually survived were the ones that worked together. An independent person alone 
has a far less chance of survival than a person that is in a, a tribe or a clan or a community. So what does that have to do with children's friendships? When we look at children and we look at families, what we know is that people need to be intentional about who they're partnering with. Mm -hmm. They need to decide, you know what, based upon how we can look back at evolution and who survives and who does well in society, what we know is partnering is critical. Right. So when do we partner? Do we partner when we're adults? No. What we know is that children from very early on, and babies, toddlers, um, preschool children, they find friendships. Well, they do this nat naturally. It's a natural thing. Right. It really is. And you see children that thrive. What are these children, the children, what do they have in common, the children that are thriving within uh, friendships or when they're with other children who are thriving? The children that are learning to share, mm -hmm. the children that are having mutual respect for each other, the children that can actually basically what's called read each other's mind. So what does that mean? Can children read each other's mind? No, they can't read each other's mind. But what we know is children are born with the ability to take cues from their caregivers and parents. We innately have in us, it is God given in us at infancy, the ability to look at our parents and take cues from them. So for example, mm. if a child, if a parent is angry at a baby or is angry with their spouse and the baby's in the room, what do you see? Most likely you're gonna see the baby start crying. Mm. The baby starts matching the cues of the parents. If a mother or a father smiles back at the baby, very, very early on, what does the baby do? Smiles back at them. So in friendships, what we see with children is they have that natural ability to not read each other's mind, but to instinctually know, what do you need in this relationship? Hmm. What is it that you're looking for in me? And as parents, when we foster the instincts of children, and respect, you know what, you are seeing that your peer right now wants to share your toy. Mm -hmm. You're right, but you inside of you don't want to share. That's right. not your natural in inclination. But as a parent, when we teach the children to start respecting what they're seeing within themselves what, and fostering that in our kids, what happens is that our children start becoming socially acceptable. And so, so go ahead. Well, I was, I was going to say, so this isn't something we teach as much verbally as we model this, right? We can model it, and we can actually teach it verbally, too. We need both. Okay, because I was going to say, isn't most of the time our kids are watching how we interact? Absolutely. Our right. kids are watching how we act, but we actually need to say, we need to encourage and foster it. So when you see a child share, or when you see a child not sharing, or okay. using aggression, right? When we just let it, we can't just let it happen, even though we're modeling no aggression and sharing, even though we're modeling that, what we have to do is encourage them and say, you know what, you're right. You saw that you needed to share. And of course, we're not gonna use this many words. Right, right. But instinctually, you see that you need to share. Mm -hmm. Good job sharing right, and right. encouraging that. Encouraging when, good behavior exactly. and discouraging bad behavior. Right, okay. exactly. Right. I think for me as a parent, you, uh, parents can say, you know what, that's just um, a no-brainer. Right. Of course we would do that. Yeah. And I think what I'm seeing is that, no, it's not automatic where parents are doing this. Right. They're not automatically encouraging good behavior. They're not, they're not paying attention to kids and saying, you know what, you are sensing that your friend needs something and you're not doing anything mm -hmm. about it. Right. Instead of saying, you know what, your friend is hungry right now, you sense they're hungry, now you need to follow through. Yeah, I was also thinking about we tend to uh, verbally talk about the negative things, like oh, you, yes. you shouldn't be doing this, but then when we see our child do something good, maybe we just take it for granted, right. rather than it's just as important to say, great job. Exactly. Or maybe more important. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and two, right now what we're seeing is a lot of parents, they're isolating, and they're staying with their own, their own families. Mm -hmm. And they're learning to get along within their families, but then you see the children, as they grow up, they haven't been socialized. Right, right. Yeah. And social, socialization right now is a huge problem yeah. because children get to school or they right. get, they're, they're isolated mm -hmm. from peers, from social circles, yeah. and they get into society and they can't function. Mm -hmm because they've never learned this reciprocity, this, this right. give and take in yeah. their life, and they don't know how to do it. They've never been 
at very young, early age to say, you know what, you instinctually know what people want, and they haven't developed along this path of being able to, to go back and forth. Well, and technology is one reason to blame for that. Absolutely. The, the other one is just fear, because I think sometimes well-intentioned parents are like, ah, you know, there's so much, but you, you got you to gotta allow your kids to, to get out there yes. in age-appropriate ways. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we're so fearful and we want so much to protect our children, mm -hmm. which is a great quality. Yeah. But what we see in science is that children that are bonded with their parents and caregivers, when they have a secure attachment to their parents, from birth to five years old, they create that secure attachment. They can actually go out into their peer circle and be completely secure mm -hmm. within who they are right. as a human at a very, very young age. And we so underestimate their ability to be able to take care and know morally what is right. Yeah. To just actually know. And what's so interesting is that we just take away their power. Yeah. And we say, you know what, you can't do it. And instead of encouraging them to say, no, you're going to go out there in that scary world in preschool mm -hmm. or kindergarten, and you know what, you're going to be great because yeah. I'm going to be right here by you. Well, and, and it doesn't matter what field our kids end up growing up and becoming you know, professionals or what their workplace is, but having social skills is the number one indicator of success because we can always learn the trade but if yes. you don't have social skills if you don't know how to interact that way it doesn't matter how brilliant you are. there's a lot of brilliant people out there that are struggling yes because of this what you're talking about absolutely and I just want to encourage parents you know what most of it is you have to decide what you want your kid to do what how you want them to behave mm -hmm. what is your moral compass yeah. what are your standards by which you live where are you what journey are you taking your children on where are you going and everybody's is different we don't all have to be the same but you have to choose yeah. and then from that early on even if your kids are school age you have to start yeah. directing your kids on what you expect from them and what you want from them remembering that hey they're going to live in the world and if i choose if part of my standard of living is and my way that I want my kids to live is to go out and be successful, independent adults, not living at home when they're 35, <laughs> but actually have a job on their own in a home and a car, these are real problems right now. Yeah. They're serious problems, and yeah. it goes back to childhood where we're not socializing our children correctly. Mm. Well, that and what you said is there's, there's a lot of confusion these days with adults of what life is about. So if, if as adults we're confused, we don't have a deep conviction of morals and, and what life is about, we're not going to be able to pass on anything concrete to our kids. Right. And I, as adults, I just have to tell you, you know what? Figure that out quickly. Yeah. Figure it out and start teaching your kids. Decide yeah. how you want to live. And, you know, I just want to tell parents, this isn't a, a teaching on go throw your kids out into the world. Yeah. Yeah. No, you protect them. Uh -huh. You decide how you're going to live. And it kind of goes into our final stages of, of how do we do this? Do we do it on our own? Yeah. And it's like, no, you don't. Within the hunters and the gatherers, mm -hmm. you got to choose. Are you a hunter? Are you a gatherer? Mm -hmm. There are choices that have to be made. And with our children, we have to decide what peer groups they're going to be in. Right. You know, all parents decide... Right now, the biggest thing is I want my kids to be well-rounded. Well, what you do is you dilute your children. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're not good at anything then. Right. Right. You say, oh, I want them to be a great reader. I want them to be into literature, but I really want them to be into math and science. Yeah. And their brains aren't wired right. for literature. They're wired for math and science. So instead of picking a road and a path that your children are going to go on, you dilute them because you don't make them great at anything. Mm. And it's the same with peer circles and social circles which we kind of go back at Green Valley to the church. Right. I, I think I think because we have about seven minutes here, I want to mm -hmm. get to this point, and I, yes. I know you want to get to this point. Yes. That, that again, getting our kids connected to the right social circle, it's, it, it takes intentionality, yes. and it takes discernment to see where their giftings are and where their strengths. Talk about this for a little bit. Well, you know, as you look at your kids, you have to decide... You know, right now we have the Christmas play going. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Everyone, please come out and see our Christmas play. It's amazing because it has children in it. Mm -hmm. And what we see is um, within our children's program and our Christmas play, you see parents that with great intention have decided their kids have a gift for acting. Mm -hmm. 
and they've gotten them involved in a great program at church doing a Christmas play. Mm -hmm. But it's not just that they're getting exposed to acting. They're also getting exposed to a community of like-minded people. Right. Jesus is the center. Mm -hmm. And they're also around people that are also actors. But they're also people that the parents have chosen most likely that have the same mor morality that they have. Mm -hmm. They're taking their children on the same direction. Yeah. They're all doing the same thing together. Mm -hmm. And they're not doing it alone. So what you see with parents that is so, this is just one example, right. and this happens all the time mm -hmm. out in the community. But what you see is you see parents partnering. Yeah. You see them partnering, and kids aren't being raised within their own little family and their mom and dad. Yeah. What they're being raised in is a, a, a middle circle of believers or community, which is their carpool, yeah. other moms and dads and grandmothers that are all participating and getting kids to practice and encouraging them, going over lines with them that aren't their parents. Yeah. It's exposing them to a bigger community. And then within that, that middle circle of community, you have the much greater community, which is the church, yeah. that is also supporting them. Well, you, you know, this is, this is our bias, but it's a healthy bias, I think, that, you know, because my kids, your kids are grown, my kids are grown. But I, when we raise our kids in these kind of social circles and, and with like-minded people, and, and not, not like-minded in everything, but no. just they... We have the same values, right. kind of the same, same goals. As as our kids get older, they'll they'll they'll. Uh, you're you're going to need this. You're going to need parents of young kids as their kids get older. We had friends mm -hmm. that had same values. Yes. That our kids would listen to them far better than they would listen to their parents because yes. kids go through that stage where mom and dad don't know anything. Absolutely. And so to have that support, and so they're hearing those voices and that that you know, that, that reinforcement, this is the right way to go. It's huge. Yes, it is huge. And what you see, too, is that children not only bond to their parents, they bond to other people, which yeah. is critical. Yeah. Having those ties to other people that matter in their life is just like you said, a, a great blessing to children. Yeah. Because when parents end up n not knowing anything to their children, they have bonded with somebody else that their parents have strategically chosen right. for them to bond right. to, that they'll listen to. They're like-minded. Well, and that's where, again, we go back to our bias, but when parents take the time to get up on a Sunday morning or a Saturday night and get their, you know, bring their kids to church yes. and, and then at Green Valley with our kids program is is the student leader you know because you lead yes. the, these like-minded people we're yes. going to invest in these kids so these kids are hearing from adults they're learning how to socialize with their their own age group but then they have these adults yes. speaking values into their life yes. positive values absolutely that parents you they you can't you, you can't you just can't imagine what a gift that is so yes. take advantage of that gift that way you tell parents yes. take the time Get the kids ready, get them to church, and yes. it's going to be a huge gift and a huge payoff. The, the payoff is huge. And the consistency. Yeah. You know, kids can't attach to people if it's not consistent because trust can't be developed. Right. I mean, you only yeah. can make a difference in a child's life if the child trusts you. Yeah. So consistency. I have to tell a story. I'm just going to call the child Jose, but Jose's in my Wednesday night class. His, he's, his dad is a single dad. He brings two kids to church every single Wednesday consistently. Mm -hmm. And I love him. And he mm -hmm. sits by me every large group. And I'm, I'm connected to Jose. Mm -hmm. He is my friend. And yeah. I'm his friend. The other day he left for um, class. And I said, Jose, you know what? I really want you to remember that Jesus really, really loves you. Mm -hmm. And his dad was standing there, and he said, Jose, I told you Jesus loved you. And he said, I know, Dad, but when you said it, I didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. When she said it, I believed it. Wow. So hmm. it goes back to connect that connection yeah. and the consistency and the like-mindedness. Yeah. And, and the choice that the dad had that, you know what, he wants his child to know that Jesus loves him. Obviously, the dad had been teaching Jose right. that Jesus loved him. But for some reason, Jose couldn't hear it from his dad. Mm -hmm. But when his teacher told him, who was connected to him, who he trusts, for some reason he could hear it for the first time. So, and actually, he didn't hear it for the first time, but he, maybe he believed, believed it, it for the first time. For the first time. Yeah. So it just goes back to those connections and parents intentionally picking who their children are going to be um, bonded to, wow. who's going to speak into their life. So even though this phrase has been stolen by a million people, the African proverb that it 
truly takes a village is, is true. It is, a tr it is a true statement. Yeah. And I just want to encourage parents, be strategic on the village you choose. Yeah. Don't just pick anyone. Right. Don't let anybody p carpool your children. Right. Pick like-minded people that have the same morals and values and um, foundation that you want for your children. Mm. Just don't let anybody have your children. Pick them wisely. Wow, that's good. Uh, it, just to wrap this up, you're, you're student director at Green Valley. Yes. Is that your title? Yes, student, student ministries director, yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, I know what you do, I just didn't know what you, if you had a fancy title. Uh, it's a good, it's... straightforward title. One, one of your passions is to help parents. Yes. It, it's Obviously, we invest a lot in, in children, but that connects us to parents. So yes. can parents call if they want help, if they want more wisdom on from this show? Absolutely. Can they, can they call you? Absolutely. Come to, you can call me, 622-3231, extension 210. I would love to talk to you. We have resources for you, parenting classes, single mom classes. We would love to get you connected to the church. And actually, any kind of help that you would need, we'd love to talk to you. Yeah, and uh, no strings attached. No. Meaning you, we're not going to, you know, you don't have to, you, we're not going to force anything. But no. I just appreciate your passion, and, and you're a great resource. Yes, and, so. and I'm happy to help anyone. Cool. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for having me. This is Lenise Hargett, but I tried to. I called her Lynette, and I combined the two names. That, You're now forgiven. I'm figuring out. I, I feel horrible. You're forgiven. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, thank you. Thank you. This is a good show. We need to do an, a second part two on this because there's so much information. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for being with us here on the Basics of Life, and we'll see you next time. What if you believe, believe